From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Long distance operator, Wilmington, Delaware is calling you. Okay. Go ahead, please. Johnny? I do. Well, this is Don Freed. What's happening there? Your expenses are running away up and we haven't gotten a report from you. I've been too busy. What's that supposed to mean? That's supposed to mean that the tip I got was good and it was bad. Yes, Gloria Tierney, 1231 East 57th Street, had a mink coat that was stolen from the Todd estate. No, she didn't tell me much about it because she got herself shot down in the street last night. Yes, I'm working with the police here trying to find out how she comes by the coat. But what I want... Listen, an hour ago I went out to see an ex-husband of hers. His name's Bill Powers, and he seems to be the bird we're looking for. You know what he did? He cried and blubbered all the way down to the morgue. And he's in there right now making a positive identification. I don't blame him for crying. So what's new with you, Mr. Expense Account? Boy, you're a real man-eater today, aren't you? I sure am. Bye. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Four State Insurance Company, Wilmington, Delaware. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Todd matter. Expense account item eight, 20 cents, aspirin. I bought them in a drugstore across the street from the morgue. I figure I needed them. On the way down in the police car, the ex-husband of Gloria Tierney gave us a very little information about her activities up until the time of her death. After he made the identification, we all walked across the street. Expense account item nine, 30 cents, three cups of coffee. Sergeant Mapes, Bill Powers, and myself. Powers cried a while, then straightened out somewhat. I hope you get whoever... Whoever did this terrible thing, Sergeant, I hope you get him real fast. You sure want to, Mr. Powers. Why would anybody do that to Gloria? Why? Maybe you can help us answer that. We well, hope you can, Mr. Powers. Oh, you. You're just interested in that coat she was wearing. Well, mister, I don't believe she was wearing a stolen coat. What do you think of that? I think that's a pretty fair way to think right now. But it's not very practical since we already have proof that it is a stolen fur and that she was wearing it. Yeah. How about some more coffee? That's cold. What? Oh, no. Look, we're just trying for the facts of the matter, Mr. Powers. I saw Gloria Tierney. I know what kind of a person she was. We have to start somewhere. You can understand that. Yeah, I suppose so. Now, you told us you saw her last week for a drink. That's right. Have you been seeing her right along? Yeah, sure. Even though you were divorced a year or so ago? Yeah. Yeah. Did you know she's been going with someone else, too? Yeah. Bill? Yeah. Bill Chambers. Is that his name, Bill Chambers? Well, yeah, I don't know him, but she talked about him a lot. Here. Take a look at this picture. Is this him? Yeah, that's him. I thought you knew. You're sure this is him? Oh, sure. The picture was in her apartment. I've seen it there. One day, I asked her who he was, and Gloria told me about him. Well, what did she tell you about him? She just said she was going out with him. Oh, she told me that he asked her to marry him. She said he had a lot of money. Anything else? Oh, uh, I don't know. Did she happen to mention where he works? No. What kind of work he does? No. Do you know where we can get in touch with him? No, no, I don't know that either. I, I can't help you. I only know she's been going out with him. Hmm. I don't get this. You and her were divorced, but you kept on seeing her. And she got this new boyfriend. And she told you things like that? Yeah. <laughs> Funny, isn't it? Why'd you bust up? Oh, oh, this and that. Kid stuff. I suppose... Spat over this and that. I don't know what exactly... Anyway, we were going to straighten it out. We were going to be married again. Oh, what about this Bill Chambers? No, she didn't want to marry him. She wanted to marry me again, she told me. When? Day before yesterday. She said she... She said she would marry me. Now she's dead. You know what kind of a car Chambers drives? Uh, oh, well, she... A Cadillac. How do you know that? Oh, she told me about his car. 
Another thing, I went out and I bought one myself just like his. I thought it might do me some good with her. We were crazy, weren't we? Where were you last night? Home. Can you prove it? Oh, yeah. Home. All night. I was home while she was out getting herself killed. The name William Chambers was checked through the New York police files. 24 persons more or less fit the general description of the suspect. It took two days for Sergeant Mapes and his men to track down all the leads. Neither Mrs. Stromberg or Bill Powers could identify any of them. An all-points bulletin was issued describing the suspect in his car. Same results, nothing. On the third day, the pawn shop detail turned up two items that had been taken in the Todd burglary. Uh, there they are, Jenny. Uh-huh. Watch and a ring. Todd lost a watch and a ring with a lot of other stuff. Case numbers in the watch check out. The ring's engraved. Uh-huh, yeah. Now, where were they picked up? Shop on 3rd Street. The proprietor bought them yesterday. A man who signed the buy book used the name James Agenian. Phony? Yeah. Gave an address on Polk Street. That was phony, too. We got a good description from the proprietor. Fits Chambers right down the line. Oh, then he was still in town yesterday. Yesterday, yeah. But this stuff's been on the hot sheet for a long time. If he's had any experience at all, he knew he was taking a chance trying to unload it. Probably trying to raise money to get out of town. What I was thinking. Well, if he keeps on trying to raise money and unload all these things, I'll have all the loot back. If he keeps on trying, we'll keep on trying. Johnny, we're going to get this, baby. Sergeant Mapes. Where? Okay. He does need money. Huh? They found his car. Used car lot up in the Bronx. He sold it at 10 o'clock this morning. At the used car lot, we learned that a man answering the description of William Chambers had driven in that morning and offered a black 55 Cadillac for sale. The used car lot manager had finally settled on a price and made out a check. He reported that Chambers seemed extremely nervous and anxious to make a quick deal. The car was impounded and examined. A full set of fingerprints on the steering wheel and dashboard gave us a positive identification on William Chambers. Oh, what do you know? William Charles, William Carls, William Charles, Walter Cameron. One, two, three, seven aliases. Real name, William Charles. Male, Caucasian, age 33. 178, 61. Now, let's see. 14 arrests, two convictions. Both car thefts. Hmm. Quite a boy. Well, we got a real tag on him now. Shouldn't be long before we pick him up. Hmm. Doesn't look like a killer, does he, Jenny? I don't know. What's the killer supposed to look like? The search for William Charles continued. Associates and relatives listed in his criminal file were contacted and questioned. All denied knowledge of his whereabouts. In the meantime, two more pieces of stolen property connected with a Todd burglary were recovered by the pawn shop detail. Mm -hmm. Expense account item 10, $3, one telegram to four state insurance in Wilmington. Explaining our progress in the case and listing the recovered items. Johnny Dollar. Are you interested in finding Bill Charles? Who's this? My name's... Never mind. Do you want him or don't you? Sure I want him. I'm at Traft's restaurant on 42nd off Broadway. Can you meet me? Yeah. 15 minutes. I'm in a gray suit, pinstripe. I'll be sitting alone. I'll watch for you. Expense account item 11, 75 cents, cab fare. From my hotel to Schraff's restaurant. A small, pretty brunette woman in nice clothes was seated at a table all alone. She looked more like a housewife on a shopping tour than someone who might be connected with a bandit and a killer. Sit down, Mr. Dollar. Okay, sure. There's a reward posted for William Charles, isn't there? For that Todd matter? That's right, $5,000. Well, I get it if I turn him over to the police. Not all of it. Half of it goes to an ex-convict who tipped me off in the first place. Half? Yes. You don't seem very anxious to get him. Oh, we're anxious. But that's the way it is. This other half of the 5000 is spoken for. I want to get something else straight. What happens to me? What do you mean? I've known he had a part in that Todd matter for a long while. I haven't said anything. Does that make me a party to it or something? I don't know. Well, this is going to get me in trouble. If I have to spend the money for lawyers to keep out of jail, I don't want any part of it. All right. My company will cover that part. Now, where's Charles? Not so fast. I better have something in writing. Something that says your insurance company will pay me a reward and give me help if I get in trouble. I'll talk to them. I'm thinking of the future. I'm going to have one once this is over. 
Are you? Yes. Yes, I am. Now, how long will it take you to arrange this? Oh, about an hour. I can do it by phone, I guess. That'll be fine. Who are you? Melva Charles. His wife? Yes, that's right. $2,500. Not much for a husband. He's not much of a husband. He was once, but then he had to give away a mink coat and spend time away from me. I see. I doubt it. You people hardly ever see anything. We try. You make the arrangements. I'll meet you again in, say, two hours. Two hours. I gave her a 50-second start before I left the table. When I got out on the street, I was just in time to see her climb into a cab. I was trying to hail one to follow her when a black coupe pulled up to the curbing. Come on in, baby. Hey, Mapes. Get in. The light's changing. That is Melva Charles in that cab up there. Yeah, that's who she said she was. She wants to sell you her husband for the reward, doesn't she? Yeah. What's the delay? She wants to be sure she'll be handled right, the money and all. Say, how did you get in on this? <laughs> Very dirty trick, baby. Everybody my men questioned about Charles mentioned your name, where you were staying, and what interest the insurance company had in this matter. Somebody was bound to look you up, especially Mrs. Charles. So we've kept an eye on you. Now where are we, Sergeant? Her name was Melva Thaler before she married Charles. Her old man had a pot of money back in Minnesota. But she couldn't keep out of trouble and got herself disinherited. Money's always been her problem. Isn't it everybody's problem? Not the way it is with her. You should see her record. How much you offer her? Half. The other's spoken for. $2,500. Well, Charles is no good to her now. If he sticks his head out, he'll get caught. So she might as well cash in what she can on him. <laughs> nice people, huh? Swell. Uh-oh, she's leaving the cab. Get down to the corner and park. Can you see her? She went into the apartment building. Let's go. Which apartment, Johnny? Here we go. Right. Nowhere. Beats me. Just a minute, Johnny! Now, what? Before I went down, I heard it go off a couple more times. It must have been six inches from my head. My eyes couldn't see, and my feet couldn't move. But I could hear. Johnny! Hold on! Hold on, baby! There'll be another exciting episode in our story of the Todd Matter tomorrow. Tomorrow? Well, there are times when $75,000 worth of stealing isn't worth a plug nickel. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by John Dawson, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure and join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs>